How's it going, Publius? It's going, Mod. How are you? Going well. Um, I, I was just saying, you know, people are getting ready for Thanksgiving, so I guess we're we're all more or less kind of busy with that. Well, we're here now. We're here now. Yes. Um, everyone who's with us, thank you for joining, and you know, feel free or drop all of your questions at town hall, town hall chat um, um, for now, from now. And Publius, I think maybe most of this discussion is going to revolve around root. Um, and, and the root token um, um, itself. And I wanted to, you know, uh, spend some time or ask a few questions um, that, you know, maybe maybe answer or explain a little bit more about uh, the root token. So the root token is a silo deposit wrapper. Uh, what that is is that it's basically a wrapper around the silo deposit, and then it makes it fungible and it can be used, you know, uh, as an ERC twenty token. My question is um, for three different, let's say, uh, people or parties. Someone who has no silo deposits, so you know, and doesn't know about Beanstalk, but you know, came across the root token, and then uh, someone who has a silo deposit um, and you know wants to uh, transfer it or wants to issue a root token, and then someone who has a silo deposit but you know has no interest uh, uh, in root uh, at all whatsoever. What does the root token mean to those you know three parties? Uh, let's say. So. I think that perhaps maybe a fourth party is is necessary because the the parties without silo deposits, I think you sort of implicitly make it seem like they are maybe interested in roots, uh, but you, you bifurcated the the people that already have silo deposits. So uh, first, let's talk about why anyone might be interested in root. Uh, the The general concept is that there's some yield. Uh, associated with holding the root token. Now, in in reality, that yield is almost exclusively derived from Beanstalk. And therefore, if we start with the, the second half of uh, theoretical uh, potential participants that you mentioned uh, of silo depositors, uh, people that are in the Beanstalk silo uh, may be interested in using Root as some sort of collective farming uh, venue where people can put their deposits into a contract and then farm those assets that are in the Root token contract collectively and all share the, the farming rewards evenly, which in practice... Uh, effectively just spreads out gas costs associated with farming. Uh, but the trade-off is that upon redemption, uh, anyone can redeem any set of the bean deposits uh, within the, within the contract. Uh, now there, there are certain rules in order to, to ensure that people are not able to remove excess value from the contracts. But I guess the, the point is that the trade-off is which deposits you actually own, that is, that is the one thing that is unclear. But the gas costs to farm then become spread out across everyone that is sharing this pool of deposits underneath the root contract. And therefore, uh, that, that may be what is attractive to people uh, that are already in the silo. Now... In addition to that, once you have this contract that performs collective farming, the the contract actually issues a token, uh, which is fungible. And a as we all know, currently at least, the majority of DeFi runs on, on the ERC-20 standard. And the result is that the lack of fungibility for silo deposits makes them difficult to use throughout DeFi, but perhaps it'll be a lot easier to use roots, uh, which are, are a fungible wrapper around the deposits throughout DeFi. And so if we look at the, the Paradox launch, for example, uh, there are some markets there that uh, are denominated in, 
in roots. And so someone may want to separate from the collective farming enabled by the root contract, use the root tokens throughout DeFi to, to do various things like sports betting or, or lending and borrowing potentially, although that's currently not live to our knowledge. So that that's why it may be interesting. Now, whether or not you have silo deposits already, perhaps plays into what what you view as the utility of the root token. If you have silo deposits, it's it's I mean we're we're totally making this up here, but it's probably more likely that you find immediate benefit in the collective farming functionality. Uh, although it's hard to understate that sports betting in roots is sort of the first outside utility for beans whatsoever. So as a silo depositor, it's not hard to to understand how there's a lot of benefits gained from 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 using the roots. Uh, but but the collective farming is interesting in and of itself. Whereas you can imagine that for people that currently don't have any beanstalk exposure or any silo deposits, that the utility itself, what you can do with those roots, is actually what creates a little bit more of a uh, uh, something that's attractive for, for you to potentially use or, or participate in. So, uh, not sure sure if that's uh, helpful or not. That was great, and thank you for taking the time to you know go in depth uh, into each of these. So, uh, Publius, you said uh, that most of the yield that comes to the root token right now is you know from Beanstalk, but right now uh, any any yield, let's say. Um, um, that comes from the betting markets, that's also going to be distributed to the root token holders. Is that correct? Well, not exactly. Uh, and I think there's a little bit of noise coming from your end mod, just for reference. Um, but the, the concept is that you can potentially get additional yield with, with your root tokens, I guess. Uh, by providing liquidity because the paradox is bet to earn concept, but the that's not really yield in the sense of value accrual to the root token. That's more using your root tokens in another protocol in a way that that accrues value. Whereas the point is that roots themselves currently uh, generate yield that is exclusively from Beanstalk and the actions of users minting and redeeming roots. Okay, and uh, apologies for the noise. Uh, is it still noisy, uh, Publius? Uh, it's a little better. Okay. Um, all right. So, P Publius, would you say is it accurate then to say that you know if you want to use Bean um, just as a deposit, then of course you know put it in the silo, uh, and then if you want to use it um, 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 as a currency in its maximum, let's say uh, um, utility or, or value, then you would use it uh, as a root token. Is that like accurate or? Well, it depends over what time horizon. I think in the short term, that's probably true, but you also can't really use it as a currency either. So it's it's not exactly the best statement. Uh, if you think about how the Beanstalk ecosystem works at scale, think that it's likely that the value that is transacted through the Bean economy is denominated in beans as opposed to roots. And the reason for that is that uh, there is a demand within the market to have a stable value asset, whereas the root token is likely to increase in value over time in a relatively stable fashion. But those are sort of fundamentally different economics propositions. And when it comes to an economy that's based in, in credit, uh, and not even talking about the, the, the bean stock as an issue of money, but more talking about a credit based economy developing on top of bean stock. Uh, if you're a borrower, you don't really want to be borrowing assets denominated in a currency that's increasing. Now, it's unlikely in practice that you're going to be able to borrow beans for much less than the silo yield. But the concept is that the in, in, in practice, you, you want to denominate the debt in something that's 
as low volatility as possible, even if there's interest on top of the debt that factors in the growth of of the silo position or the silo yield. But from a just denomination perspective, you'd expect at least I think we're, right. This is our current our current opinion. We could be totally wrong on this, but we'd expect most long term economic activity to be denominated in beans as opposed to roots. I, I agree with you. I think you raised, you raised a good uh, uh, point, especially with, and of course, you know, the core uh, point of it is that you need a stable asset. But that kind of assumes liquidity for silo deposits, and that's hopefully not too far away. And I think we've talked about this before, maybe not, uh, but you can almost imagine in a world where commerce is happening in beans that there's some sort of grown stock discount or like a a a bonus for paying with grown stock where instead of paying with the beans themselves that you just purchase if you pay with a bean deposit that is older and therefore has additional grown stock on top of it you'd expect to be compensated for paying with an older deposit so that that all of this requires a lot of infrastructure and you'd want the the UX to be really clean and generally abstracted such that uh, the complexity of the the accounting for silo deposits is generally abstracted from your normal user. But the the economics here are actually really quite compelling where uh, the silo does serve its, its sort of natural function as a savings account where in addition to the, the bean interest that you're receiving, you're also receiving grown stock over time. And then that grown stock actually allows you to, 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 to earn or, or spend additional value, however you want to think about it, uh, within the bean e- ecosystem if you're going to spend those deposits. So very a lot of different ways that this likely plays out, but the, there's a lot of beauty in the stock system. And in, in a perfect world, you'd have a, a bean economy that highlights that or takes full advantage of it as opposed to totally abstracting it underneath something like a root token. Uh, to be frank, I think that the root token is really cool, but is a, a little bit of a stepping stone to where the goal is ultimately to go. But in order to really have the, the level of sophisticated markets necessary to support uh, the, the bean economy denominated in beans, there's a lot more tech that needs to get built. And Again, given that all DeFi basically runs on the ERC-20 standard at the moment, there is an immense amount of value in having a fungible wrapper for silo deposits and therefore very excited by by what Root has created. Okay. Um, maybe my last question uh, about Root is now about, you know, Root handles, uh, let's say, some ratio uh, of BBV to stock uh, to seeds. What does this mean to, let's say, you know, a, a farmer, a new farmer who wants to, you know, buy uh, uh, some root tokens? Let's say, you know, they're holding ETH and they want some root tokens, and then others who have, you know, old silo deposits, let's say from like two or three months ago or so. But, is there any difference uh, to, to either of them? What should they look at, and you know, how's it how's it calculated? Yeah. So, so to review, the this particularly with regards to minting. When, when you mint roots, the roots that you receive is a function of the minimum of the change in the BDV stock and seeds of the contract uh, as a percentage of the BDV stock and seeds of the contract uh, when, you, when you perform your mint. And what that basically means is that if... So, so let's first consider the base case, which is just bean deposits. In theory, the root token has been implemented in a way where it's so generalized it can support beans and LP tokens, but the current root token just supports beans. What this means in practice is that all the bean deposits have the same seeds. So let's throw seeds out the window for a second. Uh, but when, when, when you deposit, when you take your bean deposits and you mint roots, the concept is that root as a contract has a stock to BDV ratio, which means the contract has a certain amount of stock and a certain amount of beans. And that ratio corresponds to a certain season of deposit. 
that stock to bean ratio corresponds to a specific season of deposit within the silo. And in practice, what this all means is that in order to receive no slippage, forfeit no value to other root holders when you mint, uh, the only way to do that is to mint roots using bean deposits that the average season of deposit is the optimal season. So if you have bean deposits and you have uh, silo deposits that are older than the optimal average season of deposit, in order to have no slippage, you may need to buy fresh beans, deposit them immediately, and then that, that average, that will lower your total se average season of deposit to the average optimal rate. Now, you may also have uh, the average season of deposit of your current deposits, even if you have silo deposits, may be too low, in which case there's going to be some slippage and there's not much you can do about it other than buying older bean deposits, which again, because there's not currently a secondary market for silo deposits or, or any market for silo deposits, in fact, uh, that's not so easy. So similarly, that applies to people that are, are buying beans, depositing them, and then minting roots, where there's, there's really no way around this uh, stock to BDV problem. So the, the concept is that, and, and, and understand that already because of the grown stock that roots accruing, that this is becoming a problem for new root mints. Uh, interestingly, this, pro this, this presents a pretty unique, at least for the short term, until a, a deposit market opens up, a pretty unique opportunity for silo depositors who effectively uh, provide liquidity for root. And I believe that a, a bean root Uniswap v3 pool has been deployed. Uh, and the concept is that, in theory, you can sell your, you can mint roots if you have an average optimal season of deposit, which if you have older deposits, you can, you can, you can buy beans to get to the optimal season of deposit. Uh, you can mint roots and then basically sell those roots with some premium to the BDV, but some discount relative to the grown stock discount. And the idea is that, you know, instead of right now, I think the slippage is like 5% that you can get, you know, there's some, I don't know if it's an arbitrage per se, but there's some value that can certainly be created for the new root minters uh, by current silo depositors, by basically the current silo depositors, even if they're not going to use the roots, mint the roots and then sell them to the people that are going to mint them. So uh, not sure what the exact status is on that, that uh, Uniswap pool, but know that that was the plan uh, in order to try to alleviate some of the the minting friction here and and think it's a pretty pretty interesting solution. Now, this is the first time that there's been a Uniswap v3 pool uh, in the bean ecosystem, so it will be interesting to see how it it plays out. And uh, as has been discussed previously, uh, there's no plans to incorporate Uniswap v3 into the silo at the moment, uh, but nonetheless, it'll, it's an interesting opportunity or way potentially for people that have silo deposits to, to maximize yield without using roots. But again, then you also have to consider the fact that when you're now taking the value that you receive for selling the roots, you do have to then basically in order to loop it, you'd have to mint new bean deposits. So at some point you do run out of old deposits. And so it's unclear what the the max supply of roots will be here, but I think it's it'll be interesting to watch play out. Now, to kind of answer your question completely, Mod, uh, is the seed angle. So Beanstalk has different silo deposits that are have different seed to BDV ratios. And in the same way that there's an optimal 
average season of deposit. Uh, there's also, if if the token has more than one seed per BDV deposit supported, then there's also an average seed per BDV ratio, if you will. And so if the contract had LP tokens and beans, there would be some optimal ratio of LP deposits and bean deposits to add in order to to mint roots in order to minimize the slippage associated with the the seed to BDV ratio, if that makes sense. No, it does. Um, this is very interesting uh, uh, to see, you know, how, how it unfolds. And I agree with you that there is an arbitrage opportunity um, there, just given the root uh, being a token uh, that will change. And it will be something that, you know, um, could be or would be I'd expect it to be art. Um, Publius, do you also see any, uh, I don't know if actually maybe this is already how uh, uh, root does it. With the root UI, when you mint from a deposit, like pick maybe the most efficient deposit uh, and start with that. Uh, is, is is that something that could be done? So not sure on the exact status of that, but our understanding is that that work is actively being done such that that's, uh, that's possible. Uh, I think that, that if it is live, it, it, uh, to, to our knowledge, it wasn't necessarily working perfectly yet, uh, but it is, that is, is, is a, a short-term goal to get up and running such that it the website automatically uses the most efficient deposits to minimize slippage and just don't want to comment on the status without knowing it explicitly. It's great just to know that this is, you know, being uh, being considered. Really incredible to see all of, you know, all of uh, what's being done and the details on it in, in such a short time. Yeah, don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but know that at some point in the not too distant future, uh, the hope is to have some sort of advanced uh, user interface that actually shows users based on their different combinations of deposits and optimization algorithms in terms of selecting different types of deposits, the slippage ratios that they'd receive over different volumes and yada yada. So the hope is to have a really helpful set of tools for people using Roots. More informative uh, UI. Stuff like okay. that's a lot of work, so don't know exactly the timing, but know that it's 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 actively being worked on. Yeah, the, I guess the important thing that it's it's it, there is an ERC twenty token now, and it's actually being used. Um, all of these other things are like you know extra, let's say efficiencies or improvements. Okay, I'll give it a minute just to see if anyone here has a question, you know, about root uh, or the root token, um, and maybe the other two things I quickly wanted to discuss, uh, uh, Publius, is you know the Beanstalk SDK. What does this mean, and, and and what what value does it have? Let's give it a minute just to see if anyone has a question about root, and then we can move to that. So, uh, Albin is uh, is in the chat and. They've been doing some amazing work on the SDK. Maybe they want to come up here and just talk a little bit about it. Yes, I, I see them now. Albin, do you want to do you want to come up and ask a few questions, maybe about the SDK? There you go. It is his hands. Hey guys, can you hear me? Hey Al, can you hear me? I think you're muted. Let's see. Test, test. Can you guys hear me? We can I hear can you. Hear. How's awesome. it going? Good, good, good. So what's going on? You guys have questions, or you want me to ask some questions, or? Uh, starting off with the starters of you know the, the Beanstalk SDK. So you, we we understand that you've you know you've been worked you know, or you you worked on the Beanstalk SDK and now it's out uh, on live. My question is, you know, maybe what is the Beanstalk SDK? Why was it built? And, you know, how, how can it be leveraged or, or utilized or used? Awesome. Yeah, great question. So for people that are not developers, basically an SDK <clears throat> is kind of like an easy mode for building on top of complex things, right? So if you're, if you're a developer uh, and you want to build on top of Beanstalk, well, there's two ways to do it. One, you can call the contracts directly, but that involves really knowing the hell out of the system, right? Like really, really, really knowing all the contract methods, what they do, all the conceptual stuff, how to put things together. 
And there's some easy things, right? Like you can just call Sunrise. It's very easy. Just call it. You can even do it from Etherscan. But then there's some really complicated things, right? Where you might want to like do some deposits or uh, convert or things like that, where you really have to both know the contracts, know what to, how to call them, and then sometimes you even have to like do some computations between calls, right? So if you're a very you know senior developer and you want to do it all manually by yourself, great, you can do that. It's kind of what we're doing internally in the UI. Um, but if you want to make a developer's life easier, you basically create an SDK that wraps this stuff. So instead of the developer having to do all the stuff manually, they just say SDK dot, you know, deposit or SDK dot mint or SDK dot easy mode, right? So that's what it does. It just creates an interface that's very easy and friendly. And behind the scenes, it does all the complicated things. Thank you, Al. So you've mentioned a few things that could be used. Um, what are those? So deposit, uh, can I call the Sunrise with the SDK, for example? You said convert as well. What other things can I do with it? So right now, it's work in progress, right? So what you can do now isn't necessarily a, a, a reflection of what you can do tomorrow, right? Okay. Uh, but to answer your question in two ways, what you can do today and what we want you to be able to do once we release version one effectively, right? So as of today, we built in uh, a couple of features, right? So you can get balances, um, internal balances, external balances. You can perform swaps. Um, the swap uh, functionality is actually more advanced than the UI. We can do swaps bet between any supported pair. Unlike in the UI, there's some combinations that you just can't do. For example, I, I forget off the top of my head, but with the SDK, literally any pair will work among itself. Uh, so, for, you know, you could you could trade like USDT to three curve if you wanted to, or bean bean to anything, right? Any any of the tokens that are that we support. Uh, so we have a really really robust uh, swap mechanism. Uh, we put a lot of effort into the farm function and into this new pipeline function, right? Because these were the things that uh, Root and Paradox uh, would have needed to to basically enable their systems to work. So a lot of time and effort went into that system. And that is probably some of the most complex <laughs> code that I've ever worked on, to be honest with you. Um, but to give you guys a rundown, it's effectively a workflow builder of steps that you can put together, right? So those steps could be contracts within, sorry, contract calls within Beanstalk. We call that the farm. Um, or they can be steps on any contract, anywhere on Ethereum, right? So for that kind of workflow, we call that the pipeline. That's the new thing that Chad and uh, Publius released. So uh, the SDK kind of helps people build and compile these steps, these actions into a workflow, right? Into a workflow that we call pipe or into a workflow that we call form, whether it's uh, internally executable uh, against Beanstalk, so a form function, or external. Um, and the SDK really just simplifies a lot of putting that stuff together. Um, in fact, when you go to the root website and you, you know, you mint some root behind the scenes, it's actually executing uh, one of our workflows through the SDK. Uh, so, for example, like if you if you picked ETH behind the scenes, there's a workflow that does ETH to wrapped ETH swap, then not a swap but a wrap. A wrapping the ETH to wrapped ETH, then a swap from uh, wrapped ETH to USDT using the Tri Crypto pool, and then from USDT to Bean using uh, our pool, right? Like our three curve pool. And then once you have the Bean, it'll uh, it'll uh, uh, attempt to deposit it into. Sorry, it'll mint root. I'm kind of simplifying it here, but uh, it'll mint root and then it'll deposit the root. So that's like a workflow that happens uh, on the root site on the on the uh, root mm -hmm. site. Well, that's clear, and thank you, Albin, uh, for, ex for ex explaining it in, in details. Uh, you said that maybe if you're not familiar with the Beanstalk um, um, code, you would, would use that. But I think even even if you are, just having the SDK allows you to do a lot of shortcuts. So, uh, and, and as you said, an example is you know those building on root are are utilizing or using the SDK. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once the SDK is built, there's no reason to build to do things manually uh, or, or the hard way, right? 
So a lot of times these things are built even to help internal development. So that's that's the hope. Eventually we're we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna rebuild or not rebuild, but swap out some of the functionality in the UI using the SDK and just have the SDK as the central development point for implementing new features. And that helps the UI for us and it helps other developers as well at the same time. Thank you for that. And, and those who are following the SDK, where can they start this information? Is it going to be listed on the docs? Uh, will it have its own you know, link? So uh, right now, everything would be in the, uh, in the repository, in the GitHub repo. That would be the central location. Um, and as far as docs, there's some links there, but it's not fully fleshed out. So that's also a work in progress. Um, but I would start with the repo. And if you have any specific questions, just find me on, uh, on Discord. More than happy to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. OK. Um, we're at the end, maybe, of uh, the questions or the things um, that I wanted to discuss. We'll give it a minute if any of those are here who maybe have a question that they want to ask. Um, otherwise, we'll call it a class. I think I see Nasdaq dropped a question. Maybe in the general chat, or I don't see it. Oh, yeah, I think it was in general. Yeah, I see it now. So he asks, what do we need to do to increase turnout for classes and maybe the Discord metrics? I think today's class, it could be two things. One is, you know, most probably it is for Thanksgiving. Um, but it could be also because we changed the the timeline. Otherwise, we typically have like a consistent uh, follow to um, uh, you know to class in general. Um, what can we do to increase Discord metrics? Uh, that would probably have to be like there is a reason for you know people wanting to come to Discord and you know for for something which is maybe they you know found out about Beanstalk and they want to ask a question um, or have something in specific where they want to join the community. So then your question is, how do we increase our exposure in general on, on, you know, on what we're doing? Um, let me just see if that's a question from you, Nat Jack. Yeah. So um, how, again, is you know, uh, Discord is mostly where we, let's say, um, invite everyone who come up and we talk to about Beanstalk. So increasing those who come to Discord, you just want to talk more about you know, Beanstalk itself, you know, um, ensure that you know, whatever that we're doing, we're, you know, we're talking about it and we're explaining or saying it uh, to others. Okay, Terboy asks, what's the state of the pod market? It doesn't seem to appear to be a lot of activity lately. I actually don't know the answer to this one, but I think it's off. Is that right? Um, I think it was off, but it's back on after EBIP6. Is that not uh, true? I think it is back now. I hate to say it, I do not know. Yes, our chat confirms it's it is on, and you know they're working on some subgraphs. Uh, maybe that's why it's not getting updated. And Nasjak, I'm not sure if I answered your question. If you would like to come up, of course, you know, on session, please do so, and we can you know talk more about it. Nasjak asks, what is Publius spending most of their time thinking about lately? A great question. Uh... On this end, spending a lot of time thinking about what the what the next let's call it three layers of protocols from an economics perspective that are most likely to to help in stock as opposed to hurt it, and in particular. Not sure how pe closely people have been following all the drama around uh, the short on Ave, uh, but current lending protocols are clearly not totally manipulation resistant, and a lending protocol is obviously something that's going to exist on top of being stuck at some point. And in addition, just thinking about Thinking about the exchanges effectively, and and there's a lot of different like types of markets that are likely. I, I mean, aren't, aren't even likely as we understand it, are being built at this point. Not just wells, but um, 
a lot of different markets that are all being built by and Roots developing some markets. Uh, so there's just stuff. Go there's a lot of different interconnected pieces that ultimately, to, to at least personally, the thing that I find most interesting is how all this stuff fits together. And it's it's both like a constantly challenging problem because there's infinite layers to go into it and really understand and certainly don't feel like 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 I'm there. Uh but it's uh I think it's it's probably the, the highest highest expected uh, value uh usage of my time. Uh I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but it's 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 both what I'm my brain is drawn to and, and naturally wants to think about the most and what I think just given the nature of the system at the moment seems like the most prudent thing to be spending real real time and, and effort on. So yeah, it's uh hopefully that's that's a constructive answer. So Nasdaq asks, when do you think the next protocol on top of beans will be released? Any details of what's in the works? Well, it's hard to to say because it largely depends on what you mean by on top of beans. Uh, if you mean developed in the Beanstalk ecosystem, uh, hopefully there'll be some stuff rolling out Q1. Uh, not sure if it'll be different protocols or upgrades to the current protocols. Uh, know that there's some other cool projects like Irrigation and Onibi that are, are being worked on. That, To be honest, we have... We, we have no information on whatsoever other than what's been released to the public. So I don't really have any sense of timing on that front, but they, those teams seem to be building. So from what we know and don't know, but can hope, uh, you know, sometime hopefully uh, early next year, there will be some more stuff uh, getting rolled out. Yeah, and as Jack says, sounds like lending, and I believe uh, ONIB is uh, lending protocol. And he uh, asks or finishes with the classic is if there is any updates on wells. Uh, no, no update on this end. Okay, I see Nasdaq typing. Let's give it a minute. You can also just come up here, Mr. Nasdaq. The diamond bean FT himself. Yeah, I'll, I'll invite you, Nasdaq. Hey, now, Jack. Hello. What's up, homie? How you doing? How's it going? Just saw my classic. Oh, we, I think you're cutting out now, Jack. Uh, recent question. Yeah, I put the other question in the chat. Uh, it was basically just, what do you think people can do to help Beanstalk? What do you think we're lacking on? Uh, what needs to be picked up? So first, there have been a number of Immunify White Hat reports which have illustrated bugs in, in contracts, uh, Beanstalk contracts or associated contracts. And on the one hand, it's not unexpected as has been much discussed anytime you're you're dealing with new smart contract code. Uh, security should not be assumed as much as it's been audited or, or looked at and tested. And therefore, uh, there's never any any assumption of security. But with that said, I feel like there really is a balance between pushing pushing product and and doing it slowly and methodically and to what's been much discussed in previous classes and down meetings, Beanstalk still has existential threats like USDT and USDC exposure in, in a least common denominator fashion, which is the worst of both worlds. And uh, therefore, there's a balance between moving so fast such that uh, you're mitigating 
uh, you're, you're trying as quickly as possible to mitigate outstanding existential risks, but also without creating new ones. And it, 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 on the one hand, that's not a beanstalk thing. That's a everyone on and around beanstalk where more, even more attention can be given towards uh, audits. And right now there's only one auditor, one audit firm looking at every BIP. We can try to find a second high quality audit firm that wants to partner with Beanstalk in a similar way that Halborn has. And I think that's much easier said than done. Uh, trying to get more white hat bounty programs looking at, at BIPs, uh, that, that, that's clearly going to be beneficial to Beanstalk. Uh, maximizing the probability that white hats find and report bugs before black hats do it and, and exploit them. Uh, the those are those are just very basic things. I think one thing that at the margin is is a tough pill to swallow, but probably seems like a very prudent thing to do is to have any code, even after it's been audited, go through like an immunify white hat review period before it's formally proposed for a couple of weeks, such that even if the DAO may, may be paying for the discovery of the bugs, the bugs themselves aren't, aren't uh, practicable or practicable uh, on chain. And so the goal is to find as many things in advance as possible without stopping the progression that is necessary in order to, to try to get, get Beanstalk uh, away from as many of the, the existential risks that can be mitigated at the moment. So that's, I don't know if that's a, can be doing better, but it's a process thing that, that everyone working on Beanstalk can probably do better at and know that there's a, there's, there's a lot of, of, of work being done on that process uh, at the moment. I think another thing that would be, would be great would be the implementation of Seraph. Uh, the Beanstalk Seraph committee has been doing a lot of work with Seraph to try to get that up and running, uh, hopefully end of year. So that'll be uh, proposed to the DAO. I think both of those uh, two items can continue to improve the security of the protocol. Uh, but otherwise, I think there was a question as to as to whether it's good or not to have more eyes looking at it. On the one hand, in general, sure, more eyes are better than less eyes, but it's it's really important to understand the context that Beanstalk is operating in right now, which is just an absolute bear. And 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 therefore there's not A that much capital to go around, uh, and B not that much time people aren't looking for new shit to invest in uh people are looking to people are looking where can i get my cat so the concept that right now at the margin the thing that beanstalk needs to be doing is uh bringing in more farmers or bringing in more eyes i don't necessarily subscribe to that but know that that's something that's been uh echoed throughout throughout the, the community in various ways. And I feel like, frankly, it's just a great time to build, which is what, what, what we're trying to do. So at some point, it, when the tech is ready, uh, the market will also be ready. And then, uh, God willing, there will be some serendipity. But uh, until then, can't kind of got to just control what you can control. And don't think that the, the the outside looking at Beanstalk is the thing to be focused on at the moment. But uh, counterintuitive to that, you know, NASDAQ, you ask, how can farmers help? That's probably, unless you want to get involved and come spend time on the farm, and there's lots to do. Um, and as has, has been many times said, if you want to come work on the farm, just make it known. And almost certainly for those that are motivated, uh, there, there's something to be done. I think at this point, the thing that farmers can really do is, is just continue to, 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 to let people know that Beanstalk is up and up and running and has has responded to the exploit and just in general, some people are still 
people that haven't gotten the memo, if you know what I'm saying. So it's uh, that's something that definitely I think comes better from from the ground up and people just telling their friends about it as opposed to some sort of coordinated top down, let's bring in more people type of thing. So yeah, to, to play a little devil's advocate to, to the, what can Beanstalk be doing better uh, and versus how can farmers help? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not really on, on Beanstalk to attract people, but I think it is, it's certainly in the interest of people that already have bean exposure to, to tell their friends what's going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, actually, that was my next question. Is like, do you even want media attention or like Twitter attention, or did you just want to focus on building? So, um, I guess you answered that. I guess I've started seeing like uh, some Twitter people who were talking about being before the exploit and then stopped. One or two of them have started talking about it again. I just like the vibe from thinking about like last Thanksgiving versus this Thanksgiving is like last Thanksgiving felt extremely energetic and like full of possibility. Um, I guess there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things coming down the pipeline. Uh, it's just that I, I feel like some of those people got burned and, and, and uh, having a tough time talking about it. So I, I don't know exactly. I'm, it's not really a question. I'm just kind of commenting on the general vibe. Uh, I think- um, yeah. Maybe one thing, Nasjak, is the, I understand there's a correlation between new farmers and then, let's say, you know, an increase in, in bean supply. Um, it, and as, as probably said in this market and with what's happening, maybe this is time, or not maybe it's probably the time, you know, to build uh, and, and, you know, until you, you come up with another, let's say, better market conditions. But it doesn't mean that you still can't get, you know, uh, inform more uh, people about like what Beanstalk is doing, explain what Beanstalk is all about. Uh, and then you know, get them, get them even as farmers, even if they're not, you know, uh, depositors uh, yet. If, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. And that's Jack. I mean, to your to your point about the feet, the vibes being totally different than last Thanksgiving. I don't think you're wrong, but at least to me, the things that matter are way better than last Thanksgiving. Like last Thanksgiving, the system was pumping, but the pod rate was was also pumping, and that was not sustainable. Whereas you look at right now, pod rate's decreasing, and the the, I mean, the pod rate's much higher than it was last Thanksgiving, but. Uh, Beanstalk has a, a real history behind it at this point. So we'll see how it goes. But at least to me, yeah, there's all the joy and jubilation around bean mints. That's kind of the, that's like the given. It's like, yeah, the system is going to mint at some point. It's, it might not be minting today, but yeah, that's what Beanstalk does. It goes through periods where it mints a lot. I think if if the the, the standard by which you're, evaluating the success of the system is, is it minting right now? Yeah, this is going to be a painful, a painful couple, couple of years because it's going to mint, it's going to not mint, it's going to mint, it's going to not mint. And that's like a roller coaster of emotion. So uh, I don't know, at least on this end, feel like the, the bigger picture is, is certainly getting painted in a much more detailed manner than it, than it was painted last Thanksgiving, and I mean, I, I remember what you're talking about, Nasjack. In fact, I was at the gun range when the system was pumping, and there was a bit. It was like a million, a million dollars came in or something, and it was. I mean, yeah, pow, 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 pow. it was electric. It was electric. I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, and this Thanksgiving, there's there's no gunpowder. At least it seems like the market's out of gunpowder, if you will. So I I hear that, uh, but I think that I think that the the whole game has just matured so much so that even the concept of evaluating the mints as the thing by which we're going to judge the the energy. I don't know if that's right. To me, the energy is around. There's betting happening in beans. 
there's actual utility. It's exogenous from the protocol. That's electric. It's a little bit less electric than a million dollar bean buy, market buy, and then hundreds of thousands of mints. But it's it's all going to build back up to that and then some at some point, God willing. And I think if if you're if you're in a rush to get there, we're never going to get there. So instead, we gotta we gotta just focus on the the process and not worry about the the day to day and hope that hope that the process is good enough. Yeah. Once once again, you kind of beat me to it. Is I was gonna say this time around, it feels like we're electric for utility instead of just uh you know people buying pods and wanting their pods to move up so it's abstracted a little bit i mean but if that's not better i mean come on that's way better no i I don't no i'm I'm agreeing that it is better that utility is coming through way better that the demand is for utility and for pure speculation i mean at the end of the day someone someone maybe it was even you made a good point about inorganic demand and how that's kind of like a FUD term that we've used. And I think that there is a difference between speculative demand and inorganic demand. Demand can be speculative and organic or speculative and inorganic. And yeah, this is a very different type of demand. It's perhaps not speculative in nature at all. It's a more utility-based demand and definitely a different different way of going about it. Now, maybe, maybe it would have been better if from, from the get-go, there was utility for beans, but obviously Rome wasn't built in a day. So I feel like at this point, just got to be excited for the those little couple couple hundred bean mints that are then minted for roots and then used in Paradox. That shit's really cool. So uh, hopefully at some point that'll compound. But for now, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be uh, enjoying my Thanksgiving turkey any less. That's fair. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, homie. Appreciate you coming up here. And, and and know that you, or at least think from your messages, can tell that you've been a little frustrated and just want to want to send some love and, you know, uh, know, know, uh, know, know that we're all on the same team here. And it's, uh, if we, if we knew all the right answers, uh, we we'd share them, but unfortunately, don't know don't know either, and just trying to figure this out together. No, I I agree. I I appreciate it. I think um, I think maybe it's the frustration of of being right at the right at the front and <laughs> just wanting a little little pump. And uh, yeah, that's, but you're you're not going to dump on us, Nasdaq, when you mint, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, what lesson I did kid, I learn I last kid, time? I <laughs> no, well, that's the joke, right? So everyone can go look yeah. at your YouTube video. Uh, I don't think you can make a second video. I did it again, guys. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, that is kind of the point of Beanstalk, though. When your pods harvest, it does want you to sell. So, uh, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very symbiotic system. Uh, so with, with, with that in mind, uh, God willing, your pods harvest soon enough, my friend. I appreciate it. Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. Thank you, Nasdaq. The next question is from Puissance uh, Publis, and and they ask who's calling the sunrise? I don't know, but they sold a couple thousand beans this week, so (laughs) Uh, we don't know, but uh, there's at least one or two bots that are competitively calling the sunrise. It'll be more interesting once the Dutch auctions are implemented. Yeah. And any any idea when that can be expected? It's under audit, uh, but not not sure. And to our to our earlier conversation about slowing down the the dev process with the bug bounties and yada yada, uh, it may not be until Q1 that it actually goes out. No, no reason to rush it, I guess. Yeah, considering that's not even. Like a, there's no existential risk that's being yeah. alleviated yeah. through that BIP, certainly. Okay, we we're actually I think almost on top of the hour and at the end of the town hall questions, anyways. Thank you all for joining us today and, and happy Thanksgiving uh, to everyone. And see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs>